hello everyone welcome back this is the second part of the video series in the first video we have seen that how to do unit testing of our rest apis using webmc test annotation in this video tutorial we are going to look at how to do integration testing using spring boot test annotation spring boot test annotation provided by spring boot app creates an application context using spring boot application it starts the embedded server and creates a web environment for our test methods to do integration testing by default it does not start a server we need to provide an attribute web environment which has several options so let's get started and start integration testing of our rest apis using spring boot test annotation in the first part of the video tutorial we have created two rest apis a get request which simply returns the user details based on a given id and then a post request which simply saves the user details in the database and then we have also unit test this rest apis using webmc test annotation which creates a mock server but in this video we are going to do integration testing of this rest apis using spring boot test annotation by starting a real server on a random port Let's start integration testing by creating a test class and we will call this test class user controller integration test. The first thing that we need to do here is to annotate this test class with Spring Boot test annotation and inside this Spring Boot test annotation we have to specify on which port this test should run so there are a couple of options we can specify a user defined port in which we will specify a port number on which embedded server will start and listening on it we can also specify a random port in that case a random available port number will automatically be picked up on which embedded server will be started and listening on it for this test, we will use the random port. And to handle communication with the HTTP APIs, we will use test rest template which provides the same methods and same HTTP construct similar to rest template. So we will auto wire a test rest template here. Now we will write down the test method which will test the get request API which simply turns the user details. And we will call this test method get user by ID test. Now in order to test this method, we need some sample data. So we will create a .sql file which will insert some sample data before this test method runs. And then we will run this test method against our sample data. So we will create a .sql file under resource folder which will reside under test folder. So let's create a folder inside the test folder and we will call this folder as resources. Now inside the resource folder we will create a test SQL file. We will call this file test.sql. Here we will write down the insert statements for our sample data for our user entity. So insert into 
user id name email phone and sender for the id field let's say 1001 for the username we will have john email as john at the rate tf3.com for the phone field we will enter any random number and the gender as well let's add another insert statement here for this user we will have id 1002 name mary mary at the rate com. any random number for phone field and the gender as female okay so we have specified the instead statements for our user sample data now let's go back to our user controller integration test class now here we have to insert the sample data before this test method runs so here we will specify the path of the sql to load the sample data for this integration test to load the sample data from the SQL file, we will use SQL annotation. Inside the SQL annotation, we will specify the name of the SQL file. And by default, it will search this SQL file under resource folder, which should be inside the test folder. Now let's test the REST API user slash ID which returns the user details. So here we will say response entity user and we will use the test REST template to execute this API. And we will face the user details with an ID of 1001. Now we will verify the response which is written by this API using the assert equals method. So in the first parameter of the assert equals method we need to specify the expected value which we are expecting from this response so here we will say we are expecting the id field of the user to be equal to 1001 and in the second parameter of the assert equals method we need to specify the actual value which we have got from this request api so here we will say response dot get body dot id and similarly we will assert other fields as well. Here we are expecting the name field to be equal to John and the email field we are expecting to be equal to John at the rate 
devt.com since we are fetching the user details with an id of 1001 and we are expecting the phone value to be equal to this value okay so now let's go ahead and test this api Okay, so the test case is failed. Let's find out what went wrong here. So here we have JDBC SQL syntax error exception column John not found. Okay, so let's go back to test.sql file. Okay, so here there should be a single quote instead of a double quotes. So let's fix that. Okay, so now let's run the test again. okay so our test case is passed so we have successfully verified our get api slash user slash id and it runs successfully so we have done an integration testing by starting a real server on a random port as you can see here in the console and we have tested all the layer of our application from user controller to user service and user repository so now let's start integration testing of our post api slash user which saves the user details in the database so we will have another test method here for the post api we will call this test as save user now for the post api we have to set up user object as we have to send user details in the request body for the post api Now let's set the username is William. User email is William at directive dot com. For the phone field, let's have any random number. And we have the gender as male. Okay, so now our user object has been set up. Now we have to send this user object in a request body of the post. So we have to create HTTP entity user new HTTP entity user. and now we will pass this request body of user in the post API.
our post API will return the saved user. So let's execute the post API post for entity. Here we pass the request body here. Let's call this request. Okay, so user field has already been defined. So we will name this as a response. okay so now let's verify the response of this post api so for the id field we will assert that it should not be null so response.get body dot get id So here we are setting not null for the user ID as this will be auto incremented and will automatically be generated when a post request is executed for this user. Now let's verify the other results. I will copy this force assert SQL statements from our get user by ID test and copy it here okay so we are expecting the name to be as William email to be William at the red tape dot com And for the gender field, we will have, we will copy the male field here. Okay, so now let's execute this test and verify that our post API is working or not. Okay, so our test case is passed and we have successfully tested this post API. So we have successfully tested both of our APIs by doing an end-to-end -end testing by starting a real server. So that's it for now. I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.